Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I am here with the next installment of the books that I read in 2023. So if this is the first of the series that you've clicked on. I am going through all of the books that I read in 2023, giving you a synopsis, reading you Goodreads synopsis of the novel, and then telling you my rating. Spoiler free is I can manage it, just sharing with you. The books that I read, maybe you'll take some recommendations from it. Maybe you read the same novels that I did. I've done three parts already, so if you haven't seen those and would like to, I will list all of those parts in the description box down below. Um, I'm hoping that this is only going to be a five-part series. I'm going to try to do as many as I can today, and then we'll do one more to wrap up the year and call it done, I hope. And then for 2024... I have big goals. We'll see what happens, but I would like to read 100 books in 2024. Um, that is my that is my reading goal, and so I would like to do monthly wrap ups of all the novels that I read that month. So that's my intention. We'll see how <laughs> see how that goes. Um, but before we get started, I do have my computer here with my Goodreads pulled up to go through the books. I want to quickly recap my Goodreads rating. Um, system and how I kind of rate novels so um, you have some context to how many stars I give something. So Goodreads ranks books out of five stars. So one is the lowest star, five is the highest star. So for me, most of my novels are three star reads. They're good, nothing spectacular, but I enjoyed them. Anything less than that obviously is a book that I did not enjoy. Anything more than that is a book I really enjoyed. So a good four star for me is a book that I really, really loved, but maybe I didn't quite love the ending or I just can't count it in like one of the best books I've ever read. Five star reads are the best books I've ever read and I give five stars out pretty minimally <laughs> around here. So in this installment of this video, we are going to dive into a lot of Rita McFadden novels. I got on a kick of Rita, Rita, of reading Rita McFadden, especially toward the latter half of the year. Um, and so I have quite a lot of her thriller novels to share. So I think I've shared a couple already. Um, but the next one that we're going to talk about is The Wife Upstairs by Frida McFadden. So Goodreads describes this by saying, Victoria Barnett has it all. A great career, a handsome and loving husband, a beautiful home in the suburbs, and a plan to fill it with children. Life is perfect, or so it seems. Then she's in a terrible accident, and everything falls apart. Now Victoria is unable to walk. She can't feed or dress herself. She can't even speak. She is confined to the top floor of her house with 24-hour care. Sylvia Robinson is hired by Victoria's husband to help care for her but it turns out Victoria isn't as impaired as Sylvia was led to believe. There's a story Victoria desperately wants to tell, if only she can get the words out. Okay, this, this was really, really good. I gave this a four stars, um, really enjoyed this novel. However, this was really, really similar to Verity by Colleen Hoover. Um, if you've read that, that's one of my favorite books of all time. This is a really interesting setting and I find I've read a few books like this with this type of setting where there's a really poor woman and she meets this really handsome wealthy man and he offers her this absurd amount of money to come live in his guest house and clean the house or something like that and then of course something goes wrong. Um, where are these men in real life? Because. <laughs> <laughs> it just seems like it happens a lot in books. It's just kind of a, a very particular, interesting setting. Um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. I gave this a four stars. I do think it's very similar to Verity, though. So if you liked Verity, I think you would like this, or maybe it would make you mad that it was so similar to Verity. It's one of those things. Maybe it's just your mindset of it. But this is one of my favorite books by Frida McFadden that I read this year, so... I would recommend it. So in part two, I talked about my love of Akatar this year and how much I loved reading um, A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. And I really wanted to get into her other novels as well. So she has a couple other series. She has the Throne of Glass series. 
and then she has Crescent City series. So I read two of the Throne of Glass series this year, um, right after I finished Akatar. So I read Throne of Glass, which is number one, and then Crown of Midnight, which is number two. And I started number three, Air of Fire, I think that one is. This series is just not for me. Um, I know that Akatar and Throne of Glass and Crescent City all are combined in some way. And, um, you know, I know that it's important to read it, but at the same time, it's too high fantasy for me. I could not get into it. Could I potentially go check back in the future? Maybe. I have heard that books like, you know, three, four, that's when it really gets good. Um, but it was just a little too high fantasy for me. I also read this right after finishing the Akatar series. So being like, I, I, I keep in mind, I'm not really a fantasy reader. I'm more of a mystery thriller reader. So reading Akatar, although I loved it, was kind of a stretch for me because that's just normally not the type of novels that I tend to go for. And so I think Akatar probably needed more of a break from fantasy. And instead I dove right into Throne of Glass and it was just, it was too fantasy for me. So I don't know. I obviously didn't continue the series. Maybe I will pick it back up in the future, but I have the Crescent City novels and I have read a little bit of the first one. And I think that one's more at my speed. It's more, I don't want to say realistic, but it's more based in reality. It um, has characters I can connect with. There's kind of that murder mystery part of Crescent City that I've been enjoying. So I think that that's going to be more my speed and not so much Throne of Glass, but you never know. I'm definitely willing to give it another try because I know so many people love this. And if you like one of your series and you like the whole bunch, but for me, this was, it, it just wasn't for me. We'll see though. All right, back to Frida McFadden. <laughs> the next book I read is Want to Know a Secret. So maybe this was at the point where I was like, okay, I really need more of a break <laughs> from the fantasy. So this one is YouTube baking sensation April Masterson knows a secret to the perfect gooey brownies or how to make key lime squares that will melt in your mouth. But if you keep watching her offline, you may find out some other secrets about April, secrets she'd rather you didn't know. Like, where did her son go when he snuck out of the house? What was she doing with the local soccer coach behind fog windows? And what's buried in her backyard? Everyone has secrets. Some are worse than others. April's secrets are enough to destroy her. I'll make sure of that. Give us the three stars. This was just okay. Like I said, it's about April. This mom who makes YouTube videos and somebody is like harassing her, sending her harassing text messages, stalking her. Um, it's kind of like a petty neighborhood mom drama <laughs> is really kind of the gist of most of the novel. Obviously, there's some twists and turns. I, I wasn't fully expecting how this ended by any sense of the imagination, but I just didn't find it to be anything amazing. So a book that I enjoyed, but not a standout favorite by any means. Next from Frida McFadden is Ward D. I read this book and like, this was a really short read, I think. I feel like I read this in like two days maybe. So Ward D is described by Goodreads as a medical student, Amy Brenner, is spending the night on a locked psychiatric ward. Amy has been dreading her evening working on Ward D, the hospital's inpatient mental health unit. There are very specific reasons why she never wanted to do this required overnight rotation reasons nobody can fi ever find out. As the hours tick by, Amy grows increasingly convinced something terrible is happening within these tightly secured walls. When patients and staff start to vanish without a trace, it becomes clear that everyone on the unit is in grave danger. Yeah, so a woman that goes into this ward D that the psychiatric unit and things start happening um, that are really unusual and make her feel very unsafe. I will say the twist I was not expecting that definitely shocked me. Um, I remember kind of audibly gasping when I found out kind of what was going on, but I did find the ending of this one to be slightly unrealistic. Um, I say that a lot. I really enjoy novels that make me think that this is something that could happen in real life, kind of, you know, I think that's what's kind of 
um, fun about books like this in a way. Um, not that everything has to be realistic, like I love Harry Potter, you know, <laughs> but just sometimes endings and the way that a situation is described seems so far-fetched and just so off the wall, like it wasn't a thought that fully, you know, was thought through that it can kind of ruin it for me. And that's kind of how I felt about this one. I, I mean, I liked it. I gave it a three stars, but I feel like the ending wasn't quite what I had wanted it to be. But again, these are kind of those, a lot of her novels for me, while most of them didn't stand out, there's a couple that really stood out and I gave four or five stars maybe. I might not have given any five stars, but you know what I mean? Some that really stood out that there's also a lot that are just kind of those like no-brainer, like quick thriller novels that you enjoy as well. Just those quick, quick reads. All right, the next Frida McFadden is Do Not Disturb. So Goodreads describes this as Quinn Alexander has committed an unthinkable crime. To avoid spending her life in prison, Quinn makes a run for it. She leaves behind her home, her job, and her family. She grabs her passport and heads for the northern border before the police can discover what she's done. But when an unexpected snowstorm forces her off the road, Quinn must take refuge at the broken down, isolated Baxter Motel. The handsome and kindly owner, Nick Bax Baxter, is only too happy to offer her a cheap room for the night. Unfortunately, the Baxter, the Baxter Motel isn't the quiet, safe haven it seemed to be. The motel has a dark, disturbing past, and in the dilapidated house across the, across the way, the silhouette of Nick's alien wife is always at the window, always watching. So if you're familiar with Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, this is clearly like a play on that, and it's, it's very similar. It even is described as a Hitchcock-style psychological thriller. Um, I mean, I really enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it because I kind of... It was like a familiar, cozy setting for me. I love Psycho. I love Alfred Hitchcock. Um, but I could see how people wouldn't like this because it's so similar. So, again, it just depends on how you how you see things. A lot of people in the, um, the reviews are kind of upset that it seems so similar to Psycho. But I think it just plays tribute to it. I think it plays its own version of kind of a Psycho type story. Yeah, I really liked it, but I really like Alfred Hitchcock. I gave it a three star. It wasn't anything that I, you know, thought was amazing, amazing, but one I definitely enjoyed. All right, let's take a, a break from Freedom McFadden for one novel. <laughs> The next book I read is Everyone Here is Lying by Sherry LaPena. LaPena? LaPena? This says, Will Wooler is a family man on the surface, but he's having an affair, an affair that ended horribly this afternoon at a motel up the road. So when he returns to his house, devastated and angry to find his difficult nine-year-old daughter, Ella, unexpectedly, unexpectedly home from school, William loses his temper. Hours later, Ella's family declare her missing. Who took Ella? Nothing will prepare you for the truth. Okay, this is about, like I said, this man, Will, he's having an affair. He has kind of this temper and he hits his daughter. Um, and then his daughter disappears, never to be seen from again. So obviously they're searching for her, um, trying to figure out what happened to her what happened to her like the the explanation of what was going on in the twist I didn't really care for I I don't know it just wasn't anything that super excited me um it was an enjoyable read I gave it a three stars but it was just okay I have found that I don't love a lot of Sherry LaPena LaPena I'm not sure how you say her name I don't love a lot of her books I've read let me click on her author profile and see her novels. Yeah, I've read quite a bit of them. They've all been two or three stars. Other than The Couple Next Door, I gave it a four stars. I do remember really liking that one. And I want to say that's one of her most popular books is The Couple Next Door. But I think I've read every novel that she's written. But 
I probably should stop because her books are always good, enjoyable, but nothing that I'm really excited about. So maybe I will take her off of my author list. I tend to find some authors that I, you know, enjoy reading or I've read a lot of their novels. So then I continue and I try to read all of them. But sometimes it gets to a point where I need to be like, okay, Alexis, like time, it's okay for you to stop now. All right, back to Frida McFadden. <laughs> I know you guys were eager for more. Like I said, I had a quite a uh, quite a pull at the second half of this year. X is the inmate. Goodreads says there are three rules Brooke Sullivan must follow as a new nurse practitioner and a men's maximum security prison: treat all prisoners with respect, never reveal any personal information, never ever become too friendly with the inmates. But none of the staff at the prison knows Brooke has already broken the rules. Nobody knows about her intimate connection to Shane Nelson, one of the penitentiary's most notorious and dangerous inmates. And they certainly don't know that Shane was Brooke's high school sweetheart, the star quarterback who is now spending the rest of his life in prison for a series of grisly murders, or that Brooke's testimony was what put him there. But Shane knows and he never, and he will never forget. Okay, I gave this one to three stars. Really enjoyed this one though. I might even, maybe I should change my rating to four because this is a book that I, I really liked. So Brooke goes to this prison where her ex-boyfriend is in jail um, for trying to murder her. When they were in high school, she got strangled with a necklace, I think it was her necklace, but she could smell her boyfriend's aftershave or cologne or something like that maybe her, maybe his cologne, she could smell it. And so she knew it was him. She testified that it was him and he is in prison. Well, now there's another man in her life that also was around back in the high school days. And so there's reasons to suspect that he is actually the one to have tried to kill Brooke back, um, back in high school. And so it's this balance of trying to figure out what really happened, who does she trust, did she put this innocent man in prison? I really liked the ending of this. It kept me on my toes. I really enjoyed this one. Um, so if you like a good psychological thriller, I would recommend The Inmate. I think we'll do one more book for today because I don't have that many left. So I can wrap that up in like one final part for the year. But the last Frida McFadden we'll talk about today is The Locked Door. Some doors are locked for a reason. When 11-year-old Nora Davis was up in her bedroom during homework, she had no idea her father was killing women in the basement until the day that a, the police arrived at their front door. Decades later, Nora's father is spending his life behind bars and Nora is a successful surgeon with a quiet, solitary existence. Nobody knows her father was a notorious serial killer. She intends to keep it that way. Then Nora discovers one of her young female patients has been murdered in the same unique and horrific manner that her father used to kill his victims. Somebody knows who Nora is. Somebody wants her to take the fall for this unthinkable crime, but she's not a killer like her father, as long as they don't look in the basement. I really liked this. I gave this a four stars. I really enjoy novels where the family members like find out that their family member is a serial killer. There was a book series I read years ago and I'll have to try to remember what it is, but where the wife finds out that the husband was murdering people in their garage and it's this whole series of how he goes to jail and then he comes out and tries to murder her and stuff. I really like that premise because that is so interesting. And again, like I'm saying, like I said earlier, something that could be realistic, like you could know somebody that you don't fully know what they're doing and stuff. So I enjoyed this. It was a good book and I gave it a four, a four stars, but that is everything for today. I think that I've talked enough. Um, like I said, we do have a, one more part to this series and I will wrap up the rest of the books that I have finished in 2023. Right now I've got a total of 55 books. So I've got like seven left to talk about, I think. So we'll talk about those and anything else that I read, but I don't think it will be much because 
I'm filming this right before Christmas, so it's going to be busy with the holidays and stuff like that anyway. But that's it for this installment of all the books that I read in 2023. I really hope that you guys enjoyed, and I will see you very soon in my next one. Bye!